Okay. Here we go. This way. Well, actually, I didn't check this way. There might be some more corpses over here. What happened? Oh my god, the game froze. No. No. Oh, come on. Game froze. Oh my goodness. Damn it. <laughs> my goodness. What's going on? The game locked up. Oh. Wow. Well, at least it saved when I got outside. Thank goodness I don't have to start all over. Okay, let's try this again. Here's a body. I already searched it. I don't think I went down here before. Whoa, what is she doing? Oh, snap. <laughs> she was spinning around. Oh yeah, that's right, she can replenish my health. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. What do I have her set to? 
Oh, you're on your own? Oh, nice. She's doing a good job. Serpent tongues. The whipping. Ooh. Yes. bodies are. I need to speak to you. A civil here? What can I do for you? I would like to ask... What can you tell me about Mathras? What's the story with this Mathras guy? Who is he? It's hard to say. He's one of the living dead. Of that I'm completely certain. But he is able to do things no other species of revenant has ever done before. You must understand that necromancy, the magic that allows the dead to be reanimated, is based upon one principle. Giving energy to lifeless bodies. Mathras functions differently somehow. It is not his body that has been brought back to life, but rather his mind, which has survived his body. He says he's 6,000 years old. You believe that? It is entirely possible. His spirit is, in theory, immortal. This magic is far different from that which is practiced in Vertiol. 
Instead of drawing energy from the world heart, he draws energy directly from the body he is possessing. Could that have anything to do with the Ice Lords or my demon? Absolutely not. Thanks. Hey, Buffalo. I see nobody's managed to kill you. Not before. What do you think happened here? That we are no more than fucking insects to those bastard ice lords. Just one of them was able to wipe out this city. We have no... T For now, we... Tell you what. <sighs> I'm going. Talk to her, you. The mercenary salutes you, Knight. I have a few... You mentioned the Order of the Ember. It is the Order that the Knight belongs to. They are the surviving warriors and honored soldiers of other orders that were lost during this war. Oh. So it's kind of the Order of the Orphan Knights. This name does not sound well to his ears. Right, right. So you haven't always been an Ember Knight. No. He was first a defender of the Algander Islands, then he was a Templar of the Order of Virgins, and then a Brother of the Rock, and then a Summer Track. So all of those orders have been lost. That must have been hard. He has lost many valorous companions in battle, but his heart is heavy with scars. I'll bet. So what is the creed of the Ember Knight? The Knight has long searched for the answer. Now he knows it. To seek a glorious death and carry as many enemies as possible away with him. That's kind of... depressing. If you follow me, we should be able to find a chance for you to get your beautiful death. Just try not to commit suicide at the first available opportunity. The night will wait for this moment. What a beating. The elves took a hell of a beating, huh? Defeat is commonplace when treachery lurks nearby. The Ice Lords used trickery and magic. The elves had no chance. This was a battle without honor. That may be. But they beat us. Now we only have the scattered remains of what was probably the most powerful army anyone has seen in an age. Doesn't it seem a little hopeless? This whole war is without hope. But since the knight and his companion are here, they might as well fight until the bitter end. Wait. Wait, wasn't he supposed to go go to go somewhere real quick? So how did you end up in the village of Valvanor? When he saw that all his kin were slain, the knight was hungry for revenge and sought out battles to bathe his pain in blood. But in every battle, he lost more of his brothers in arms and faced an enemy that only grew stronger. The orders were always hazardous, with betrayals common and errors never ending. Faced with these eternal difficulties and death, always more death, the knight lost his hope, and so he left the field of battle. He decided instead to take care of the war's victims, to protect them, even though he knew it could only last a short time. It is a final mission without any other hope but to give comfort and relief to a few innocent souls. So what did you abandon when you entered? The knight has already said he does not wish to speak of this. This could be the last chance you get to talk about it. It is true that tomorrows are becoming less likely, but the abandonment of the past means the forgetting of it. And it is often painful to dig through memories. That's what you claim, but I can tell you're dying to talk about it. Very well. Know then that the knight once had a family. I suppose they must be dead. I'm sorry for your loss. It was long ago. Fifteen years have passed since his wife and his two daughters were taken from him. The Deadwalker army? Yes. They were among the first victims when the Ice Lords attacked the Algander Islands. They were thought to be safe with the other women, far behind the front lines. 
But the dead walkers broke through our lines and stole away the innocents. The knight searched the enemy lines for days. But when he found them, he had to fight what the sorcerers had created from his wife and his children. A dread creature, multiple and monstrous. This was the most difficult fight of all his life. What do you think of the Red Scribes? Their studies have made them blind. Only knowledge interests them. They show contempt for all else. Today they have the ear of the last surviving warriors. They do not deserve this honor, and their words are hollow. Let's change this. I'll leave you. All right. Oh. Maybe we have to talk to the captain. 